Okay, hi everybody. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Today, here's a company that you've seen us talk about a lot of times. We're called Odd Burger. Previously, globally local, we've undergone a rebrand, which we can talk about. Uh, today, we're here. We have a chance to sit down with the CEO and founder, James. James, thank you so much for coming in with us. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, first and foremost, of course, any investor out there, if you're in Canada, the symbol is odd.v. Uh, it was formerly GBLY. That's undergone a change. If you're an American investor, you'll have to wait a little bit longer. But for now, we actually did notice a listing pop up uh, in the U.S. So if you have a broker down there, you can use the symbol GBLYF. Um, however, stay tuned for further updates on that uh, in case we do switch to the to the new odd symbol. But for the time being, uh, if you do have a broker, that can get you started. So without further ado, uh, we just want to jump right into these questions. So James, for anybody new to the story, to the odd story, can you give us a quick overview? What's your company all about? Yeah, no, for sure. So we are uh, one of the uh, world's first uh, all vegan fast food chains. And um, so basically to kind of put that in context, we create um, plant-based versions of iconic fast food. So the things that we kind of grew up with, the all the um, menu items that we came to know and love, but we serve them in a more ethical and uh, and more healthy way, obviously. So, uh, yeah. So basically, we have a combination of corporate stores and franchise stores. We also have a food manufacturing facility where we make all of our own food from scratch. So, um, and that's that's where the kind of the uh, the food technology component comes in. So the entire fast food industry, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think I read the stat that by 2027, it's going to be a trillion dollar industry. So pretty massive. So what is it specifically about the vegan segment of this market that gets you excited? Well, I, I think I think it's honestly the opportunity for growth and for making change in the world. I think that's the, uh, the, the number one thing that excites me. And the fact that it is such a big industry and the fact that it is one of the, uh, you know, it, that industry is so um, predominantly based in animal based proteins, uh, which are, you know, bad for the environment, uh, bad for our health, um, uh, you know, um, and obviously horrible for animals. Um, so th this this industry really needs the change. It needs disruption. And if, if we're going to continue living on this planet and we're going to continue with a sustainable food system, it uh, it needs to uh, you know um, include fast food because fast food is such a huge component of our overall food system. So that's what excites me. That's what that's what kind of um, summarizes our mission, and that's what uh, I think we're here to do is to really disrupt the industry and and make it uh, a more sustainable industry. Yeah, I think that makes sense. We can probably both agree that comfort food is certainly not going anywhere. Uh, and, you know, when you're coming home from even a, a bar on Friday or Saturday, your only real option is like an Im impossible burger from from a and So there really isn't like a whole lot of variety. So can't wait till you guys launch in the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. No, we're super excited about expansion. Like we, we're we expanding, you know, right now across uh, North America, actually. So I'm um, really excited to sort of have, have, uh, have a presence in, in every city because, you know, um, th that's again how we're going to get people to to you know try our food and obviously to 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 grow the business. So we're we're excited to come out there. So that is a perfect segue into the next question. So how many restaurants do you actually have um, active right now? And can we talk a little bit about your short and kind of your near and medium term expansion plans more specifically? Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, so we're just about to open our fourth location actually. So it's going to be opening our hometown, London, Ontario. So. Uh, but we have uh, another uh, three under construction right now. So we plan on opening another location at the uh, end of August, early September. Um, that's going to be in uh, Waterloo, Ontario. And then another location in Hamilton is expected to open uh, later in, in September. Then we got uh, another one in Toronto, which is going to set up for October. So um, then a whole bunch more for the fall and obviously after that. So our plan basically in, in the next year is to open 20 new locations across North America. Wow. And that also includes uh, a flagship uh, U.S. location in Manhattan, which we're really excited about. That is super exciting. So, uh, you know, from what I understand, uh, franchise the franchise model will be certainly a, a portion of this. So let's say if somebody were to be watching right now that actually had an interest in opening up a franchise, is there anything you would like to kind of say to them? Anything that they should know? 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think obviously getting in as, uh, as a franchisee in our system is is an it's an awesome opportunity for growth, but also for I think there's not too many things out there that you can franchise that can really align with your ethics. And I think for 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 a lot of people, that's what really they get excited about because people. Um, I think it's very important that people want to invest uh, in what they believe in. Now, it's not just sort of about making a buck. It's about, you know, actually um, your investment is going to reflect what you do. So for us, uh, franchising is a way for people to really make that full commitment and, uh, you know, and also have uh, what we feel is a great business as well. So uh, and huge opportunity for growth. So. Um, you know, the best way if for anyone that wants a franchise, um, we have a franchise franchise application on our website, you know, reach out, contact us, tell us, you know, hey, I need a, I need a hot burger in my city. I want to do it, you know, um, and we're happy to talk. So, I mean, obviously, it's a it's a fairly significant financial commitment, but, um, you know, we're here to help in terms of uh, our relationship with lenders and other things that can make that uh, commitment a little bit easier. Um, so. Yeah, so I mean, we're we're really excited to franchise, you know, across Canada. We we have a whole we have a ton of interest right now on the franchising side, and uh, you know, we're 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 gonna have a lot of uh, exciting announcements soon on, on that end. That's exciting. So, something that caught my attention pretty, you know, in one of our first conversations, even uh, in terms of your restaurant format, it was right when we first started talking. You know, where we're pretty much still in the thick of of kind of peak COVID, if you will, and we had a conversation about the format of your restaurants being essentially, you know, can you say anything's COVID proof, but it's certainly well positioned for COVID. Can we talk a little bit about specifically how they're positioned and do you see people's dining habits, you know, have our dining habits changed permanently going forward? Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, obviously we, we had our restaurants uh, open before COVID during COVID and after COVID. So I think we, we can really, uh, we have a lot to, to, to say about that because we experienced it. Uh, and it was it was really interesting because we have been sort of transitioning, you know, even pre-COVID to these smaller footprint restaurants, smaller spaces, more compact, more efficient. And, you know, we started with, you know, a restaurant 3,500 square feet and now our, our restaurant footprint's like a thousand square feet. Wow. So um, that part of that transition, uh, specifically in our, with our Toronto location, you know, it was it was a small space at 900 square feet. Um, on the main floor so that that um you know that allowed us to really thrive during the pandemic because we were really always uh had a takeout model so um we were we were always a takeout focused business so when the pandemic hit you know we just did more takeout which for us we were you know was kind of in a real house so we you know i i guess just um Maybe it was a bit of luck, but to be honest, uh, you know, I think that the fast food industry did quite well during the pandemic. So, um, and you know, now you know, with our our models going forward, that small footprint is is a, a huge part of what we do, um, and you know, it just makes us more efficient. So, for example, our our new restaurants they only have eight seats and then one bathroom, eight seats, a limited seating, but you know, you, you can still get that restaurant experience for a lot of people. They can still come in and you know still sit down and, you know, enjoy the atmosphere and read our posters and still get that re restaurant experience. So for us, we really, um, you know, we, we feel that we feel like the, the restaurant experience still has a lot of value. People still like coming in and, uh, you know, there's certain things that don't travel well, like ice cream and Sundays and that kind of stuff. So, you know, and that's where, that's where I think, um, for us, uh, you know, having a delivery focused business, but not, you know, not a ghost kitchen, not something that is, you know, entirely, you know, um, sort of off the grid, uh, was important for us. So, and yeah, I think I think we're seeing a permanent shift in uh, in how people are eating because even now with with the restrictions lifted, over half our businesses is on online still. Wow. Um, which you know pre COVID you're at maybe fifteen percent, twenty percent at the most. You know, so we are seeing a permanent shift. We think that from that this that you know COVID has changed how people buy food. And even on a nice, hot, sunny day, beautiful weather, no problem, over half our sales are still delivery, wow. which is something that we didn't see before. You know, in those types of days where, you know, people would be more willing to come out to, to the restaurant because it's good weather, um, they're just choosing the convenience of not leaving their house. So yeah. I would say, yeah, it's a big change. Once you get used to it, <laughs> it certainly changed my my dining habits. Once you get used to the click of a button and foods outside of your door, it's 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 hard to go back. Yeah. It's unmatched. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
So you guys have a really kind of to dive in even further about your restaurant format. You guys really trumpet and talk a lot about your smart kitchens. They seem pretty futuristic. Um, do you want to talk us through like what is your, you know, quote unquote, your smart kitchen? I'd love to hear well, more about I mean, that. Yeah, I mean, let, let's we can just start by saying this. You know, you can run a restaurant, our whole restaurant with one person. That's crazy. So, I mean, that's just, the, that's just, we'll start with that. So the question is, is you know, how do you do that? Because you're not going to see other any other fast food restaurant uh, you know, we're talking traditional fast food, burger, fries type of place, run with a single person. Um, and we were able to do that because all of our equipment is automated. Um, and so everything from how we cook our burgers. So we don't, for example, we don't have like grills or flat tops um, at all. Um, so that, that whole, that whole, that whole um, act of being able to, you know, train someone to perfectly cook a burger and not burn it and not undercook it, not overcook it, you know, cook it just right, which is, to be honest, challenging you know we took that away and we automated that process in in conjunction with our manufacturing facility because we were able to sort of match the technology we use at the at the, at the restaurants with how we prepare the food for the restaurants mm -hmm. so what that means is that it can come to the restaurant you can cook a burger in less than a minute so you know um and that's made to order food so mm -hmm. it's it's fresh and made to order so um, so yeah, I mean that, and this is this is the magic of our smart kitchen. It's it's about getting food that's fresh, made to order. You know, it's not sitting in a hot holy cabinet for half an hour and gets thrown on your burger when you when you walk in the restaurant. It's this burger, this food is made for you when you order it. Um, and you know, you combine that with the with the um, the fact that it doesn't take much time, and you know, you have all this equipment to make to make the process uh, consistent and easy to train staff. And I think what we have is we have a model that's scalable, simple to operate and consistent, right? And that is really important to succeed in the restaurant industry. And that's what the smart kitchens really give us. And that's something that we're gonna, that we are continuing to, to develop where we, you know, we're gonna have more and more proprietary automation technology, which is gonna be implemented in our restaurants, which is again, just gonna give customers uh, more consistent food, more customizable food, um, and uh, you know, food made the way made the way that they want it. You know, is 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 at the end of the day what it's all about. So yeah, so yeah, we're excited about uh, obviously our smart kitchens. Well, that's awesome. You you guys certainly have a format that that works, and consumers seem to be resonating it, uh, resonating with it. You know, you you mentioned just before we started recording here, you just recently opened your uh, your latest location uh, to another lineup down the street. So maybe we'll get our designer to throw some photos on the screen here somewhere. But congratulations, yeah. that's huge. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, we, we opened our, our location at Vaughn and, you know, we're lined up around the corner, um, hundreds of people in line sort of thing. It's the excitement is just unbelievable. So um, we're obviously it's a testament to our, to our new name of Odd Burger. People are excited about the brand, excited about what we're doing. And um, obviously the, the food uh, is, is something that people are still very excited about. So we're, you know, we're looking forward to bringing this across North America. Well, that's been fantastic. And hey, James, really great to get an update from you. Uh, again, I want to hammer it home for any investor watching this. If you're in Canada, the stock ticker is odd.v. If you're in the US, like I said, perhaps wait a little bit longer, but you may be able to buy it through your broker with the symbol GBLYF. So, of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd be delighted to answer them for you. And we'll definitely be sitting down with you again, James. So thanks once again for, for coming in to chat with us. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Awesome.